Okay, so tonight I want to talk to you about Malchus. Now, Malchus um, is in all four of the Gospels. He's only named in John, and only in Luke does it say he was healed. But that guy is in all four Gospels. And so God was like, yeah, you need to talk about him, especially during those healing things. Um, by the way, Malchus, the name Malchus, means king, which I always thought was pretty interesting. Like, I wonder why his mom... I have, I have this vision of his mom naming him king because I think she thought maybe one day he might be a king. Or I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that they would do that. So I have a few PowerPoints. So you can click to the first one. These are great, great um, uh, paintings of, of this incident of Malchus, the guy. I'm sorry, maybe I should have said that. I just assumed you knew who Malchus was. Malchus is the guy that got his ear chopped off by Peter right before they took Jesus from Gethsemane. So I want you to pay attention to these first couple and look, if, 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 look at Peter. Okay, look at all the Peters. All right, here's Peter, and here's here's poor Malchus. All right, go to the next one. And here's Peter, and there's Malchus, and go to the next one. And there's Peter, and there's Malchus. Now, what do you notice about all three of those Peters? They look mean. Yeah, they do. They do look mean. And they all have white hair. And a beard. What? 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 I like his what, what? They were like, you know, putting him in the future, but then bringing him back to G. Because he was a young man. He was, like you know. You. So then, the last, go to the next one, please, Jason. This is the one that I really like. That's about how I see him, you know. And, and, and here's Jesus, okay. And look at this guy. I mean, I just, I just thought those were so great. They, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. And I really think that that's, that's true. I love those. I think they're all amazing. So, you know, Malchus. And the first gospel that was written was Mark's gospel. Um, um, dictated by Peter. And then Matthew and Luke followed. And John came after that. So, um, the other thing that you should have noticed on those paintings was that it was Malchus's right ear. And it also says that in Scripture. His right ear was sliced off. Well, why was it his right ear? Is there a significance to that? And it turns out there is. <coughs> there is a significance. So, Charlotte and Nikki, I told the group that um, I'm doing this, I'm dressed like this because God asked me to to do a dramatic reading. And I can't tell you for sure that he said, I want you to do it like you know how to do it, drama boy. But that's kind of sort of the feeling I got. <laughs> so I'm, as opposed to a monologue, um, I'm gonna do this dramatic reading. Also, Afterwards, uh, there's a great, great worship song that I'd like for us to, to watch, and you'll see the, the words and participate in. And then, and then, if there's any kind of Q and A, you know, have at it. So, let me get this. 
Uh, is that what the thing is for the paperweight thing? Um, that was a magnet. Cool. I thought it was a magnifying glass. Maybe. <laughs> you know, it sure could be a magnifying glass. I mean, it absolutely is. It's wonderful. That's what I thought it was. It's a paperweight. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. So I'm going to complete. Wow, you're transforming all that. My ensemble. <laughs> it's not a dress anymore. You're right. It's now an ensemble. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, there you go. I wanted to get some fake blood. Oh, thank you. You didn't. Some always can't do that stuff. Okay. Thank you. It's drama, but it doesn't matter. I would leave. Okay. <laughs> Even if it's sugar-free ketchup. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I have one of the best vivid imagination, so I don't need any help. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Um, so I'll start. Now I'm going to be in and out of here, so I'm, I'm quite sure that that thing is going to pick up my voice, right? Whether I'm on the microphone or over here, right? There's not a scratch on it. There's no marks. It's fine. Just a few hours ago, my ear had been sliced off and was laying on the ground. And I was covered in blood. My head, my shoulder, all my clothes. It was a mess. And I was in agony. I was horrified. But now I'm, I'm healed. I'm healed. It's perfect. Look, look, it's perfect. There's no scratch, there's no scar. It's perfect. We had been sent to the garden at Gethsemane. We were on a mission. I was there. The other servants were there. The temple guards and a whole contingency of men were there with swords and clubs and torches. There. And why? We were there to get Jesus. Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. The Pharisees and the and the religious leaders. They hated him with an unbridled hatred. Liars, he called them. Liars and hypocrites, right to their faces. You think Jesus was a timid man? Let me tell you, he was not. You brood of vipers. He stood there and called them. And they hated him. He made them shrink into nothingness. These powerful leaders, he made them recoil and shrink away. And they hated him. I was not going to miss this. Oh no, I was not going to miss Jesus. We were there to stop him from spreading his heresy, to get rid of him. But then something happened. Something unexpected happened. After Judas identified him with a kiss, and I still don't know what I think about that, one of his followers, slashed off my ear. There was this flash of 
metal, and, and the next thing I knew, my ear had been <clears throat> slashed off and was on the ground. I know he meant to cut my neck off and deal a mortal blow, but I turned just at the last second. He got my ear instead. There I laid on the ground in agony. And it seemed as though everything went silent. The only thing I could hear was the sound of my voice screaming in pain. You ever had your ear sliced off? Have you ever had so much pain that you lost consciousness? Well, that's what happened to me. And when I came to, Jesus was standing next to me, and my attacker had been wrestled to the ground. And Jesus was scolding his men. Put away your sword, he told them. For those who live by the sword will die by the sword. And then he mentioned something about some legions of angels that he could ask his father to bring. And I I, I I couldn't make any sense of that. And as I looked at him, laying there on the ground, I could barely see him through the sweat and the tears and the dirt and the blood. And when he came towards me, I jumped back. I was scared. I didn't know what he was going to do. reached out. He reached out his hand and he touched my head. And when he pulled his hand away, the pain stopped. The bleeding stopped. And I was healed. See, Jesus was my enemy. But he didn't react to me like an enemy should. He reached out to me in love and mercy. I'll tell you, I wouldn't have done that. If it was him, I can tell you I would not. He had a, a power and an authority about him that I had never encountered. Let me tell you something. Last night, I was a bond servant of the high priest of Israel, Caiaphas. I wasn't just an ordinary slave, a house slave. I was a bond servant. And the difference is that I willingly chose to give my life to the service of the high priest. And as is our custom, when I took my oath, I stood in a doorway and they took my right ear and they put it up against the door jamb 
and they drove an awl into my right ear to the cartilage. And it marked me as the bondservant of the high priest. But when Jesus healed me, there was no more mark on my ear. It was as if I had been set free. Set free to follow another master. greater master, an awesome master. Amen. Watch.